uh, as well. Thank you. Um, thank you very much for that answer, and I very much appreciate what you've said. But I'd like you to reflect a little uh, more broadly on the threat that the government of the People's Republic of China might pose to the United States and what we do in response to that threat. Um, so I'll um, use your words from just a couple of minutes before. You asked us to connect the dots, right, when we find them. And the question or the problem is that sometimes people will see things as dots that really aren't there. You've stated in multiple venues that the Chinese government is engaged in a whole of society effort um, to steal from the United States. And you've asked that the United States engage in a similar whole of society effort to combat China. Um, at the same time, you also stated, as you have just done, um, that this effort isn't about the Chinese people or Chinese Americans. But of course, Chinese Americans are part of the US society that you believe needs to be mobilized against China. So what advice do you have for Chinese Americans like myself um, who hope to be able to bridge the differences between our two countries but instead find themselves caught in the middle subject to accusations of disloyalty, of being a dot, um, or to incidents even of anti-Asian hate? Well, I guess a couple things. First, the, uh, I, think the only, I think I've only used the whole of society reference to describe the Chinese threat once early in my tenure. I have used the whole of society language quite a bit in referring to what we as Americans need to do to counter it. So just to be clear on that. And I have made a point uh, in almost every significant speech I've given on this topic, uh, often to audiences uh, that may not necessarily embrace the message uh, that, as I just said a few minutes ago, and I appreciate your acknowledging it, that this is not about the Chinese people and it's not about Chinese Americans who in many cases are victims uh, first and foremost of the same government that we're trying to counter. Um, now it is true that, and I've said this repeatedly, uh, and I stand by it, there is no country, no government that represents a more serious, more persistent threat to our innovation, our ideas, and our economic security than the Chinese Communist Party and the Chinese government. That is a, uh, an assessment that I make soberly and thoughtfully based on the facts, based on the intelligence, uh, and is a view that I find is shared by agencies across the government, by foreign partners all over the world increasingly, by the business community increasingly, and by, frankly, universities I'm finding increasingly. Uh, again, not based on race, ethnicity, or national origin, but based on intelligence and based on the threat posed by a government, not by visitors here. So to us at the FBI, uh, we don't view it as a middle. We view Chinese Americans here as being with us. <laughs> uh, and that's why I highlight these cases in particular, the transnational repression cases, because to me, they in a very uh, poignant way illustrate the degree to which Chinese Americans here uh, are not in the middle, but in the crosshairs of the Chinese government. And we need to work with them, uh, not as dots as a threat, but dots in a different sense. They are, as victims, they are people who have information that can help us protect them and protect the country. Um, and so that would be my message uh, to them and to you. Thank you.